What happens when you spend most of your life doing a job only to see it disappear? I'm from the generation from where hard work should pay off and I think that was the least that they owed us because they were all still making money. What happens when one of your town's largest financial contributors leaves? This is the story of how one company's failure impacted people, places, and a nation. When Toys R Us said it was closing all its U.S. stores, it didn't just mean the end of an iconic brand. It was also the end of thousands of jobs and millions in tax revenue. The losers in this case, of course, in the first instance, are the workers. Uh, they've lost their jobs and they're being denied severance. Hey fam, I'm Imayan, and this Sunday we're telling you how one retail giant collapsed and why we might be seeing a lot more stores following in its footsteps. Spoiler alert, it's not just Amazon's fault. Wall Street's involved too. So yeah, it's kind of funny that uh, that's how much help I needed. <laughs> that's how bad it was. That's the finished product, so I'm proud of that one. This is the first time Anne Marie Reinhardt has ever had to do a resume. When she began working at Toys R Us 29 years ago, she didn't need one. When I first sat down to do the resume, I was like, all right, you know, I've done this, and I'm just like, just jotting that, what those one, one or two words down. I had someone look at it from uh, the Department of Labor. She was doing, ooh, <laughs> was that so good? Reinhardt spent the first 25 years of her time at Toys R Us in New York, before she moved to North Carolina. She thought she'd retire from Toys R Us. She thought that even as she saw signs of its financial difficulties and its restructuring. She thought that even after the company tried to reassure employees. I don't want to get too emotional because when I really start talking about it, I get, I get emotional. No, that's okay, that's totally okay. Oh. <laughs> Can you give me napkins? I feel like coming on. In September, they had um, filed for Chapter 11. Obviously, you know, that was a red flag for all of us. Then Dave Brandon sent a letter um, to everyone in the country stating, you know, um, you know, nobody to be alarmed. Um, everything's gonna be fine. We're just restructuring this loan. Everything would not be fine for Toys R Us. Reinhardt is one of 33,000 employees who lost a job when Toys R Us went bankrupt. Her store in Durham shut down in the first wave of closures in February. The last stores closed shop at the end of June. I'm starting to get scared. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to get um, scared because I've been looking for a job and unemployment runs out in about four weeks. The store's road from profitability to bankruptcy is the tale of what can happen when Wall Street steps in to try and turn a company around. Economist Eileen Applebaum says, when private equity buys retailers like Toys R Us, often the investors win while the company and its employees suffer. When private equity owns the company and sells off the real estate, the company does not get the money. The money goes directly to the private equity firm and its investors. There's nothing in it for the, for the, for the retail company. Uh, and uh, it, this makes no sense from the perspective of uh, having a strong uh, business. It only makes sense from the point of view of the private equity firms. See, even if a company like Toys R Us goes bankrupt, the private equity firms still make money through things like charging millions in fees to the retailer or selling off all the company's real estate. Toys R Us was actually turning a profit when it filed for bankruptcy. How profitable was it? It was responsible for one out of every five toys sold in the U.S. in 2017. But the retailer was saddled with millions of dollars in debt thanks to the private equity firms that bought it. Too much debt for its profits to make a difference. The interest expenses alone were $400 million a year. So if you're paying out $400 million a year in just interest expenses, not to mention that you're also paying rent, not to mention that you're also paying these advisory fees, there's not a whole lot left to invest in the company. Private equity firms found Toys R Us enticing in 2005, even though competitors like Walmart were already putting the squeeze on the company. That's when Bain Capital, KKR & Company, and Vernado Realty Trust bought the toy retailer. What often happens with private equity is that they say their goals are to invest money, cut costs, and improve efficiency, and all while trying to maximize profits. Private equity makes its money if it boosts the company's perceived value and then sells it. And the majority of the dollars and cents they're using in this game aren't even their own. The companies who are owned by private equity firms are at risk of bankruptcy if they can't pay off their debt. The private equity firm 
puts in a little bit of money to that fund, very little, and the pension funds and other investors put up the rest. So they're basically playing with other people's money. The private equity firm puts in one or two dollars for every hundred that the investors put in. So the private equity firms have very little skin in the game, very little that they can lose. Companies like Bain Capital help save stores like Burlington Coat Factory, Dollar General, and Restoration Hardware and they've made plenty of money in the process. But for every Burlington, there's a sports authority, a gymboree, a Payless, and a Toys R Us. Yeah, they took the letters off the building. Oh my goodness. Wow. That stinks. Those are just a few of the retailers that went bankrupt in 2016 and 2017. PE-owned businesses are accounting for an increasing share of Chapter 11 bankruptcies. Part of why we're seeing these companies go bust right now is because of overinvestment in property during the mid-2000s. Large big box stores kept going up, as did property values. Many considered purchasing big box retail space a savvy investment at the time. The bet didn't pay off, and the effect of the so-called retail apocalypse has been widespread. Overall, retail employment has been falling. You've probably seen your local mall with a few empty storefronts. Department stores like Macy's and JCPenney shed nearly 100,000 jobs between October 2016 and April 2017. That's more than the total number of coal miners or steel workers we so often hear President Trump talk about. The retail problem is impacting every region. The nation's richest cities are also seeing retail struggle. New York City had three years of falling employment at clothing stores as of 2017. A streak like that hasn't happened since the early 1990s. When stores disappear, jobs vanish, and so does the money those companies contribute to local economies. People came to downtown in a small town because they were gonna go shopping for toys, and while they were there, they visited the other stores as well. And the same thing is true of malls. These malls and main streets are losing a major anchor store. So communities suffer, lenders suffer, vendors suffer, and worst of all, the employees suffer. Now, some of those laid off retail workers, like Reinhardt, are fighting just to get severance. Um, now it's the end of February, beginning of March, we're about halfway through our liquidation, still not no word on what the severance package was. And that's when we found out that we were not getting any severance and we found via a phone, it was via a phone call. This is a company that traditionally paid severance all the way up to uh, 2016, the year before the bankruptcy. They were still paying severance when they laid off workers and now they've refused to do that. Toys R Us is headquartered in Wayne, New Jersey. It paid more than $2.7 million to the town on its property in taxes last year. The former toy giant is Wayne's third largest taxpayer, according to Moody's. Wayne is now out exactly 1,159 jobs, which is the equivalent to 2% of its population and millions in taxes to fund town services. When Toys R Us leaves, the lot it sits on will decrease in value if it's vacant for too long. That's true of all 740 Toys R Us stores that shut down in the US. Right now, the future of all those vacated properties is as unclear as Reinhardt's employment prospects. We don't know what will happen. The one thing that is certain is that Reinhardt is done looking for retail work. I'm definitely not looking to go back into retail. Um, it did leave a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. I never ever dreamed at my age that I would be out there needing and looking for a job. Um, so that part gets a little emotional. Hey fam, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is the first of two stories we're doing on bankruptcy. Come back next weekend to see the other one, and we'll see you next Sunday.